Welcome to the Media Blender, your source for news, views, and information you can use here in Windsor, Essex. I'm your host, Clara Muska. After a winter of weather warnings, today's forecast includes yet another advisory from Environment Canada. It's about rain today, but tomorrow it's wind. Media Blender's Veronica Drakowski has our weather update. A major storm is what Environment Canada is calling it. A rainfall warning was issued yesterday afternoon, leaving Windsor residents plenty of time to prepare. The storm is expected to bring 25 to 50 millimeters of rain later today and into Friday. Environment Canada says the storm is a combination of two separate weather systems that will merge at the Great Lakes and rapidly intensify. Rising temperatures can be expected in southern Ontario, along with significant precipitation and strong winds. The Essex Region Conservation Authority says there is a potential for flooding based on the amount of rainfall and significant snowmelt. Thank you for the details, Veronica. To help prevent water damage from occurring to your homes or businesses, the authority suggests removing any snow near homes and buildings. This year, the number one resolution for New Year's was losing weight. About half of those people actually succeeded in completing their goal. As the weeks pass, the number of people who pursue their resolution continues to drop. Media Blender reporter Haley Trelat sits down with Joanne Charchet, a gym associate at Refined Fitness and Good Life Fitness, to talk about the challenges and planning that goes into achieving their goals. The key to living a healthy life is balance and everything in moderation. I think exercise and diet has a lot to do with being healthy. I know at Refine, we strongly promote not using any performance enhancing drugs or diet pills. Depending on the gym, um, I know Good Life is the busiest in January because of New Year's resolutions and September because it's back to routine. The other gym I work at is busiest when we're running a promotion. So it's mostly personal training. When you don't know any better, you can look at someone that's overweight or you can look at someone who's not exactly able-bodied and you automatically think the worst of them or you think they're lazy or you think that they did it to themselves and when you know them and you know their story and you see them come in and you see how much effort they're giving you feel differently and that changes how you feel about other people as well do what you're comfortable with have a plan and write it down you need to plan when you're going to work out for the week because there's no way you're just going to get up out of your bed in the morning and work out My biggest thing that I tell people is if you're going to work out first thing in the morning, as soon as you wake up, put your gym clothes on. Because if you go to bed at night and you still have your gym clothes on, you're going to feel like an idiot for not sweating in them. But you want to definitely write it down. Writing it down holds you accountable. Um, You also don't want to walk into the gym being lost. If you're completely unsure, you definitely want to talk to a personal trainer or you can try doing classes. Classes are fun. But basically, you don't want to make it unenjoyable for yourself. So do something that you know that you're going to enjoy. Another thing you can do is 21 days forms a habit. So try going to the gym for 21 days in a row. Just getting to the gym can be the hardest part. That was Joanne Charchet. She works at Refined Fitness and Good Life Fitness, providing information on how you can complete your New Year's resolution with promising results. The baby boomer generation turned 65 this year, and that means we need to make good choices in care for the elderly. Carrie Bruner is a gerontologist. She specializes in aging from birth to death. Media Blender's Rick Dawes spends five minutes with her on the challenges hospitals will face caring for the elderly. Can you tell me, what is the number one issue our elderly face in the healthcare system in Windsor? Are we facing a a particular issue with our elderly patients? Um, I would say that it's probably not one particular issue. It's probably a multitude of issues that are interacting together um, to create complications for older adults. I think navigating the healthcare system is probably one of the the bigger ones that stand out. Um, But in terms of um, hospital care, um, it's probably more that our healthcare system or hospital care isn't designed um, for people that have the comorbidities or the multiple issues um, that older adults are facing today. So that's probably, if I was to narrow it down, I would say that there's lots of issues. <laughs> yeah, so it's, a broad yeah it's, it's very broad, yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, and where would you say that issues like this 
sprout from? Is there like a root cause to the problems that we see, or is it just because we have such a large system? Um, well, it, there's like I said, there's different factors that interact here. So one of the reasons why this is happening um, is because people are living longer. So thanks to medical technology, people are living longer than they ever have. And as a result of that, we're seeing changes in the type of care needs that people require. So they have a lot more chronic issues now um, rather than just acute issues or um, say like a s one particular serious illness that they're dealing with. It's usually um, m multiple. It could be m more than one um, chronic issue that they're trying to manage or possibly cognitive impairment. So um, the nature of the healthcare that's required has changed um, since previous, like in the last I don't know, half a dec or half a century, probably, I would say. Okay. Does this match a larger pattern that we can see in the region or on the continent? Oh, definitely. I would say globally. Um, aging has been a, become a global issue, um, in particular chronic illness, like I was just saying. So before, um, they used to be more worried. If you look at the World Health Organization and their statistics before, um, contagious diseases um, used to be a uh, very prominent um, concern, and now it's more chronic issues um, that are becoming more costly for systems and more difficult for people to manage and care for. So yeah, things, things have changed. What are some agencies that advocate for elderly rights and conditions? Is there anybody that is oh. like the watchdog for this that makes sure? Oh, good question. Um, there are a few agencies um, that are particularly focused on older adults. There is one called the Advocacy Center for the Elderly. Um, they deal more with um, legal issues, but these also pertain a great deal to health care because we have things such as substitute decision makers. Um, power of attorney, that type of thing that can impact care and advanced decision um, or advanced care planning is what they call it. Um, so they, that would be one that it certainly interacts in a healthcare situation. Um, also groups like the Alzheimer's Society do a lot of advocacy around dementia care and education and training for staff. Um, we're trying to build our partnerships with them. Um, so there are groups out in the community um, and also one that we have locally is the Age Friendly Windsor Network. Um, that's a, a group of um, professionals from different sectors in the community that are involved in care of older adults. So it has to do with uh, all the social determinants, so um, health, education, housing, social inclusion, all those types of things, and making sure that Windsor is as age-friendly as possible. Okay. What is the, well maybe it's not a number one thing, but what is some things that uh, can prevent health complications in old age, like what can everybody do oh. to, to help themselves when they get to this stage in life? Yeah, okay. Um, that's actually a fairly easy one to answer. It's um, eating healthy and exercise, like which is probably a repeated message that you hear all the time um, when you talk about health, but that's really essentially it. Even with dementia, um, they say now that um, having a healthy diet and exercising regularly is one of the best ways to prevent um, cognitive decline. So. That's an easy one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> easy to answer. Yeah. Can't emphasize that enough. <laughs> Brunner works at Hotel du Grace Healthcare in Windsor. Her job is to create an age friendly culture. That hospital campus specializes in long term care and rehabilitation. Are you a student looking to make some extra cash? Windsor's only flair bartending school's fall winter program starts soon. Kyle Simpkins has the scoop. A uh, bartender. Are you a bartender or server in Windsor looking to up your game? Maybe a starving student trying to make some quick cash during the semester. Well, ProTenders is for you. Since 2001, ProTenders has been one of North America's top bartending schools. With ProTenders, you'll learn tips and techniques to start making more money on the floor and behind the wood. How to entertain your customers by using everyday items you find behind the bar. And of course, the art of flair. You'll be able to flip and spin everything. One and two bottle combinations, shakers, glassware, and more. Our instructors have over a decade of experience behind the bar and our current pro tenders guaranteeing you the latest up-to-date techniques and moves to make you more money the fall and winter program is filling up quick and runs from march 10th to march 14th students that means march break now you have no reason not to learn how to make the cash you deserve for registering information contact chris at chris at protenders.net or call the dominion house in the west end at 519-791-7400 don't just bartend pro tend with the rise in technology, society is changing. Churches are now beginning to adapt to that change by integrating new production aspects into services. 
Nadir Hanna is a member of the congregation at Windsor Christian Fellowship and works in the audiovisual department. Hannah spoke about the way church is bringing technology to enhance the experience of churchgoers. I think churches, as time progresses, will will be relying on technology a lot more than they used to be. It will be a very integral part of of them reaching out to the community and of them staying relevant and everything. I mean, the question is really like, what's technology is a bigger part of society, and where's church in, in relation to that? If church is falling behind, then all of the Christian body will fall behind. But if they're still with technology and if they're up to date and if anything, if they're pushing technology, then they will stay relevant and people will still be there. Nadir Hanna says the church is incorporating different aspects to remain relevant with their congregation. One of the main things is obviously like staying relevant media-wise and, and trying new things and incorporating things like, like website, Facebook and social media and then in our actual service having things such as like cool lighting and really cool worship but then it really comes down to just having something that connects with people's hearts and connects with people where they are and it meets them where they're at in life and stuff like that and it just creates that community and that bond that attracts people to come again and want to check out what we're all about. Nadir Hanna says the connection between technology and church just makes sense. Because it speaks to people where they're at like if you want to find out about something in life or about a product or something like that. You go to either TV or websites or media and why would finding out about God or finding out about a relationship with God be any different? This is Clara Muska and you've just enjoyed the third edition of Media Blender. Join us again next time.